My name is Laura Bishop, and I'm the head of uh, the academic programs for the Kennedy Institute of Ethics. And I'll soon be turning over the mic to Maggie Little, who's the director of the Institute. But I wanted to give you brief words of welcome and to give you a quick description of the showcase. Um, there is information for the showcase over on the table where my colleague Roxy france Nerdine is. She is also working on the project with uh, me and some students. So you can find the information there and on our website as well. But I'll give you a brief description. The idea behind the showcase is that we have a lot of fabulous research being done at the undergraduate level, some of which is in bioethics, um, some of which is in areas related to bioethics. We were lucky to receive funding from the Mary Elizabeth Roth Charitable Trust to highlight undergraduate research. We're going to have a three-day juried event in April, to which we would like to invite you to submit all sorts of research in various forms, including video shorts, uh, undergraduate papers, so if you work on a good paper in your class and you'd like to develop it further, posters from your lab research. We also are looking for business plans from government, uh, from science and the public interest is working with us, and from the business school. So if any of you have friends in the business school who haven't heard about the showcase, be sure to encourage them. The great thing is that not only will you have a chance to connect with other undergraduates and faculty and experts who are interested in bioethics, but you'll have a chance to develop something that will be uh, good for publication or for submission to other uh, uh, competitions around bioethics. And there are cash prizes, believe it or not. So there's $500 for first place, uh, excellent work, $250 for second place work, and $100 for third place uh, prizes. And we'll have several of those prizes depending on what type of work is submitted. The other exciting thing is that if you have an idea and you'd like some help in developing it, we have two ways that you could do that. Um, you, if you have your own faculty advisor, you're welcome to use them, but we also have a group of faculty who are willing to mentor you in your project. Some of them are here today, and you'll get to hear from a few of them. We also have some wonderful workshops coming up in January and February that will help you uh, develop your ideas and bring them into actually projects that you can submit. And you'll hear about some of those workshops as well. So there's six different submission categories. I'll just review them for you, but posters, academic papers, multimedia, so I'm hoping somebody will do something that combines words and music, or maybe comes up with a dance performance that interprets what it's like to be a patient, or a play, literature, literary analysis, journalism, Journalists have been very important in the history of bioethics. They revealed a lot of the ethical concerns. They've helped educate us about new developments, so we're working with the journalism minor. Uh, policy proposals and business plans. So there should be something for all of you. And I hope that you will be interested in submitting. If you're interested in finding more information, please go ahead and sign up. And now I have both some faculty who are teaching classes, running workshops, and some of the great resources that we have here on campus. And I will pass the microphone along, so. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out. It's so great to see all of you here. And uh, three cheers for Pi Sisters Pies. I know. So I'm Maggie Little. I'm the director of the Kennedy Institute of Ethics here at Georgetown, which is the fourth floor of Healy Hall. So. Georgetown helped to invent the field of bioethics, which started with the patients' rights movements in the 1970s. We had founding fathers of the field and next generation scholars on our hallway. So if you think, what is bioethics? Um, think ethical issues in healthcare, the environment, and emerging technologies. So things that are in the headlines as well as perennial issues that humans have faced since we've been around. And um, we're really excited at the idea of encouraging students to take their interests, whether it's in, if you're in pre-med or you're in environmental studies or you're doing something in biotech, to take your interests and um, find some ethical issues that, that confuse or inspire you, and then work uh, with faculty mentors and participate in the workshops to grow your idea into something that you can share with the world and submit for competition. So there will be lots of resources next semester to help you, but I really encourage you, if you think you might have an idea,
per project that might at this point even just be a question or something that really, really keeps you up at three in the morning. You know, should we clone people or not? Okay. Um, or, you know, uh, let's grow meat in the lab, which is what they're starting to do now if you're a vegetarian. Is that good or bad or icky or all of the above? Okay. I also want to do a quick mention that we're doing some very cool undergraduate uh, classes in bioethics in this very room here. This is Ethics Lab, which is an innovation space on uh, at the university. It's just been around for about 18 months. And we do student-driven, project-based learning in bioethics here. And we bring in people uh, uh, who are philosophers, but we also bring in people who do design work, um, and students create things of real value for the real world. So next semester, we're, uh, three classes are getting together and doing a collaborative around this stuff. So uh, lots of fun things to watch for as well. All right, let me turn it over to Arjun, who's actually the head of design of Ethics Lab and can tell you a little bit more about what he does and what he'll be helping with in the showcase. So. Uh... I guess what I do would fall under the multimedia branch of projects. Uh, in class here in Ethics Lab, in our work outside of classes in Ethics Lab too, we use design to make progress or do research on complex bioethics issues. And the output of that includes all sorts of different things. Students this semester have created comic books, board games. Students now are designing services or products that other students will actually use next semester in class. And so <clears throat> there are a number of different non-traditional media and projects that I'm here to help you guys with if you want to do something other than a paper or you know, dance. Yeah. I can't help you with dance. So. <laughs> My name is Kola. I actually don't come from bioethics or philosophy at all. I come from the glamorous and exciting world of American studies, um, which is an interdisciplinary major at Georgetown that deals in the complicated social, cultural, historical, artistic um, manifestations of what it means to be an American and what is the American experience. Um, but what's cool about American studies and what's cool about it here is that it's an interdisciplinary major and an interdisciplinary field. And so my work is mostly in dealing with interdisciplinarity and how to make disciplines work together, how to pull their methods from each other, and how to get productive, informed, exciting, innovative work from more than one space at the same time. I really like the idea of bioethics mingling with American studies because there are a lot of bioethics issues that are inherently a part of the American experience, at least in the last hundred years. Um, also, I work with non-traditional forms of academic work, similar to Arjun. Um, I'm all about the fact that we can make rigorous arguments in film and in plays and in literature and in poetry, um, and they can be just as valued and just as interesting as American studies work or as in any other um, disciplinarily tied field. So I do that. Um, what I'm going to be doing for the showcase is teaching a workshop that deals with the sort of trifecta of issues. Methods in the humanities, which can be hard to ferret out if you're taking a method-laden area and blending it with something like English or poetry or dance or cultural studies, and thinking through what it really is to engage with texts in certain ways, what it is to really have methods for humanities-based work. Um, also then thinking about what interdisciplinarity is, how to leverage it, how to use it, where it comes from, and what makes it really useful, especially when thinking about complex questions and non-traditional forms. And then finally, um, working through how non-traditional forms can be rigorous and effective and have just as much research um, clout to them as anything else. So that's my piece. Well, hi, uh, my name is Karen Hammerschlag, and I come from a completely different discipline. I come from art history, and my interest generally concerned with the intersections between art and medicine and all the kind of ethical problematic questions that come with that strange, the meeting of the visual and the medical. So um, I'm going to be teaching a course next term in the art history department on art and medicine and inspired by the questions that are being posed here, we're going to be thinking about some of the ethical issues around how we deal with pictures of patients, how we deal with photographs of patients, how we 
negotiate the relationship between the doctor and the patient um, through artistic visual forms. Uh, and I'll be leading a workshop um, early next year that I guess we're going to take particularly problematic images, uh, specifically illustrations of dissections from the 19th century, and think about how we deal with those images, the questions we need to ask of the pictures, the questions we need to ask of ourselves as we grapple with them, uh, and then think more broadly about the way the visual functions in all manner of ways uh, when it comes to ethical and medical and medical spheres. Um, so I think that should do it. <laughs> So I'm Beth Marhenka. I'm the head of the Gillard New Media Center, which is on the first floor of Lounger Library. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Gillard New Media Center. Uh, so a lot of this equipment is actually, they've borrowed it from Gillard. And, um, our mission is to provide resources and tools for students and faculty to create relevant and dynamic media in any kind of format. So it's kind of following off of what Arjan and, and um, Laura had mentioned, is you might want to create a podcast or a documentary. Um, or maybe in your paper you want to have some data visualization. Well, we have the equipment that you might need, whether it's video cameras or audio recorders or a PA. This is, came from Gillard. Um, you might want to go and hold a protest. You might need a PA. <laughs> or you want a nice graph or um, something interactive in your paper. We can show you how to do that. We've got workshops online guides, and most importantly, we've got expertise. So we have a lot of staff that do you know, video or audio. So you've got all the resources around you, from faculty to staff that you know, think of something unique, think of the way that you want to communicate your message. It might be an article, it might be something else. So you really you know, think big and then come and ask. Ask people to help you to the, take it to the next level because um, we probably have, between all of us, we have the resources that would make it possible. Hi, uh, I'm Mark Hakarainen. I'm the head of the Bioethics Research Library. It's a beautiful space downstairs for Splore. And so if you're wanting to get a little more you know, like knowledge about what you're trying to present through these other great resources, you can visit us. We have a lot of great books. We have articles, journals. And we have three great staff members I'd like you to think about uh, utilizing for this. Uh, Roxy France Nerding, uh, Martina Dura in the back, and Nat Norton. They're all very good at bioethics content, so if you want that $500 prize, make sure <laughs> you book a consultation with one of us, and I'll let uh, Martina speak a little bit more about our in-person consultations. So Martina, I'll give you a chance to speak. I will just be brief. What we can do in the library is we can help you refine a search to just two or three articles that will be, you will be in heaven researching those. And then we can also help you set up um, uh, current awareness um, email services so that you're aware of all the other research that's going on on your topic. And we love doing it. So, so please come and use us. And if you have any ideas for you know, new books to get, we'd love to help and get that for you. So if you see something you want, talk to us, we'll get it for you. So you can see there are a lot of resources to help you um, with your research. And the material that the Bioethics Library has actually will help you figure out what's going on all around the world. And uh, Martina has access to many of the um, resources that tell you what scholars are working on. So you'll have a very good finished product that you might be able to submit to the American Society for Bioethics and Humanities as a student prize winner. You can win another prize. So the other thing I wanted to say is that we're working with um, some really great student groups here on campus. So the Bioethics Showcase is kicking off a week of undergraduate research, actually, in April. So our showcase starts on the 14th of April, and it's 14th, 15th, and 16th. And on the 16th, we are handing it over to the Undergraduate Research Symposium, which uh, is sponsored out of the Provost's office and is open, they have papers and panel sessions. Uh, Trish LeJane is the, is the um, coordinator for that. And then on the 17th, there is the Undergraduate Research Conference, which involves a lot of the bench sciences and, and research sciences with great poster sessions. 
So it's an entire week, and you are certainly invited to submit. We're trying to make our criteria parallel, so you can submit both to the showcase, to the research conference, or the research symposium, depending on what's appropriate for your work. We're working with the Undergraduate Bioethics Society, and Nicole Kelly, who's the president, is here, and she'll speak with you in just a minute. And also, one of the great places that you can publish your paper um, is the new Georgetown University Journal of Health Sciences. And we have the editor-in-chief here, Jay Paul, who will also speak with you. Uh, one other person that I wanted to have speak before we turn it over to the students is um, Professor Irene Gilson is here. And she does a lot of work on international and global bioethics. And she asked, uh, is it OK if a student is working on a research project with a faculty member if the student writes up a portion of that research and submits it for the showcase? And I said, that would be excellent. So we're hoping to encourage students who are doing GURA projects, but also who might work with faculty. And Irene said, I would love to have a student work with me. So here's some possibilities for you. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I didn't expect to be doing this. So I'll, I, um, I think what I'd like to share with you <clears throat> is that um, I am blessed with having four funded projects on bioethics in really extraordinary parts of the world primarily the broader Middle East and North Africa area. So can anyone tell me what the broader Middle East and North Africa area comprises, other than the obvious? So the B, the broader, includes Afghanistan and Pakistan. So um, we have projects in Yemen and Tunisia and Jordan and um, Pakistan, and that all of those involve biomedics. And the one in Pakistan, in which some of you may be interested, and those of you who are involved in the theater and arts may be interested, <clears throat> is that the project is designed to foster a culture of responsible science with a focus on bioethics in Pakistan, engaging five universities, and engaging the arts throughout Pakistan. So for example, um, playwright and theater director in Lahore, and musicians in Islamabad, and artists in Karachi, so we're engaging them in a multi-generational, interdisciplinary project around bioethics um, in Pakistan. So we're quite excited about that. And that's just one of the four that we have. And um, we, I ensured that we have funding for students in each of the projects. So we work with, uh, with Sonia on ensuring that students are engaged in these projects. So, those are examples. And I just started to develop work with um, the typical Catholic University of Rio in bioethics as well. So. Hi, everyone. Um, like Laura said, I'm Nicole. I'm the president of the Undergraduate Bioethics Society. Um, we're really excited to be working with the Kennedy Institute um, on this showcase. Um, you know, I won't go on for too long, but really our goal is to bring about awareness and discussion in the undergraduate population about these really important bioethics issues. Um, and remember that they're not some lofty ideas in journal articles, they're really applicable, practical things to be discussing. So this showcase is a great idea to really find what you're interested in um, and make it into a research project in a way that you're also interested in. So we're really excited. If you have any questions, um, maybe looking for a faculty member, uh, for a mentor, feel free to contact me in addition to Laura, really um, anyone that you heard of, heard from so far. Um, so please find me if you have any questions after. We also Hi everyone, my name is Jay Paul and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Georgetown University Journal of Health Sciences. We are a peer-reviewed journal dedicated to publishing the quality research of undergraduates at Georgetown. Um, we publish twice a year at the end of every semester. We also have a bi-weekly uh, new location. So if you see on the table, we have uh, two of our latest copies. We publish um, events on campus and off campus. We've covered the bioethics cookie talks several times. Those are always interesting. If you haven't gone to those, I highly recommend you go. Um, I'm here because we would love to have some bioethics submissions in our journal. I think um, having bioethics, a bioethics section in our journal would be a huge step, not only for the journal, but for bioethics at Georgetown. And being a student and being published in a, in a university-sponsored journal is amazing, not only for your student career, but also like anything else you want to do afterwards, maybe graduate school, business school, or so on. So yeah, definitely submit. Hi, I'm uh, Sonia Jacobson from the Provost Office. I'm the director of GURA, the Georgetown Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. 
Um, I just want to make it more available to more students. It's an opportunity. Um, it's a good way, it's the only way, in fact, unless you register for a course, that you, that you can get your research noted on your transcript um, any, any and every semester that you participate. Um, as Grep, I mean, I'm thrilled that bioethics has such a focus here. Um, I really wish Grep could involve more disciplines other than the sciences. There's absolutely no reason on earth that it doesn't include all of the humanities performing I mean, there's research involved in everything, and like Mr. Paul is saying, um, when you leave Georgetown, it's almost inevitable that your career will involve research. So it's skills, you know, that you're really good. It's so easy to apply to grow up. It's every semester, three little steps if you're new, two little steps if you're a returner. Just do it. <laughs> Thank you. So you've heard about an array of resources that are here to help you, and uh, the great pleasure that we would all have in seeing your wonderful research. We have uh, connections with other departments and other faculty. Some of them were not able to be here today, but Film and Media Studies, um, English Department, Business School. So whatever your major, whatever your friend's major is, if you don't want to do the showcase by yourself, you can encourage your friends to be a part of it. It's, it's open to everyone.